الله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيد المرسلين أما بعد فأعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الصلاة والسلام عليك يا رسول الله الصلاة والسلام عليك يا حبيب الله الصلاة والسلام عليك يا نبي الله وعلى آلك وأصحابك يا نور الله حضرت سیدنا شیخ محمد بن سلیمان جزولی علیہ رحمۃ اللہ الہادی حس آئی واز ونس آن اے جرنی ایٹ دا ٹائم آف سلا کیم ایٹ اے پلیس دے واز اے ویل بٹ نو بکٹ اینڈ روپ اللہ اکبر آئی واز ایکسٹریملی وریڈ ہاؤ ڈو آئی ٹیک آؤٹ واٹر فرام دس ویل اینڈ پرفارم مائی وڈو ان آڈر ٹو ریڈ مائی سولا مین وائی A girl peeped from the top of a house and asked, What are you looking for? I replied, Rope and bucket. She asked my name. I replied, Muhammad bin Suleiman Jazuli. Rahmatullahi alayhi. The girl said surprisingly, My goodness, you are the one who is very renowned. But your condition is that you cannot even take out water from the well? Saying this, she spat into the well. The water suddenly and amazingly rose up. Allahu Akbar. After he made wudu, he asked the girl, Daughter, tell me truly, how have you got this miracle? How have you achieved this power and this miracle, this karamat? that you spat in the water and the water of the well rose up? She replied, Allah Akbar, dear viewers of Madani channel, listen very carefully and attentively. This Madani Munni, she replied by saying, I recite Salat ala Nabi in abundance. Subhanallah, Subhanallah. I recite Durood upon our beloved Nabi sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam in abundance by the virtue of it. This miracle had taken place. Subhanallah, Subhanallah, Allahu Akbar. Sayyidina Shaykh Muhammad bin Suleiman Jazuli, alayhi rahmatullahi wali got, goes on to say, impressed by this girl, I made a firm intention to write a book about Salat ala nabi entitled, Dala'il al-Khairat Sharif, Subhanallah. After experiencing this incident with this, Madani Munni, Subhanallah, Hazrat Muhammad Suleiman Jazuli, Rahmatullahi Ali wrote this beautiful book, Dalail al Khairat Sharif. May Allah Azza wa Jal have mercy on them and forgive us without accountability for their sake. Subhanallah, dear viewers of Madani Channel, have you noticed what a great privilege was granted to the Madani girl by the blessings of reciting Salat ala Nabi? She spat into the well and the water of the well rose up. Subhanallah, Subhanallah. Dear viewers of Madani channel, dear children, listen attentively. Keep in mind that the Madani girl was blessed with special grace of Allah Azza wa Jal and was able enough to cause the water rise by spitting into the well just by reciting the rood upon the noble messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. By reciting the rood in abundance upon our beloved Nabi sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam. Subhanallah. So dear viewers of Madani channel, this should be our habit. We, this should be our habit, our adat. That whenever we have free time, whenever we have spare time, we should send the rood, we should recite the rood upon our noble messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Let us recite this couplet together loudly. Dhikr o durood Har ghadi virde Zubar hai 
ذکرو درود ہر گھڑی ویدے زبار ہے میری فضول گوئی کی عادت نکال دو میری فضول گوئی کی عادت نکال دو ویری بیٹیبل ٹرانسلیشن May I always make the dhikr and recite Salat ala Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. May I be freed from the habit of un, from useless talking. Subhanallah. Ameen. Sallu ala al-Habib sallallahu ta'ala ala Muhammad sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam. Salatu wa salamana alayka ya Sayyidi ya Rasulullah wa sallam alayka ya Sayyidi ya Nabi Allah. Dear views of Madani Channel. Once again, we would like to welcome you to this beautiful, auspicious episodes on Madani channel regarding the laws of Salah. Subhanallah. We discussed the six preconditions of Salah. The six preconditions of Salah. And inshallah, today we are going to speak about the seven faraid of Salah. We discussed Takbir e Tahrima as well as Qiyam. The second fard of Salah is Qiyam. The least level of Qiyam is that if the hands are dropped then they should not reach the knees and the complete Qiyam is to stand completely straight. Two fard of Salah from amongst the seven faraiz. Today inshallah Azza wa Jal, by the grace of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we will discuss the third fard of Salah from amongst the seven faraiz inshallah but before we hear anything let us come Dear viewers of Madani channel, let us make good good intentions that whatever we are going to hear is for the pleasure of Allah and Allah's Rasul sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam inshaAllah. Whatever good you hear inshaAllah, let's pass it on to others. As our beloved Nabi sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam said in a beautiful hadith, Balligu anni walaw aya, convey on my behalf even if it is one verse, subhanAllah. Therefore, you make good intentions that you will listen to the silsila from beginning to end and inshallah with good intentions we would sit here so that we may gain ilm e deen and so that we may pass it to others inshallah azza wa jal sallu ala al habib sallallahu ta'ala ala muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam salatu wa salaman alayka ya sayyidi ya rasulullah wa sallam alayka ya sayyidi ya nabiya allah so the third fard from amongst the seven faraid of salah is qiraat Recitation of the Holy Quran, Subhanallah. Qiraat means pronouncing each and every letter from its correct place and origin so that each letter is quite distant from each and every other letter, Subhanallah. Qiraat. This is how to make Qiraat. Even when reciting the low volume, even reciting in low volume, it is necessary for the reciter to hear his voice of recitation. Listen very carefully and attentively, dear viewers of Madani channel. The third fard from amongst the seven faraid of Salah is Qiraat, to recite the Holy Quran. And now, there are some Madani pools, inshallah, which we will discuss. How should one recite Quran? How should one, in which manner should he recite the Holy Quran? So the first Madani pool is this, that even when reciting in low volume, you are reciting in a low volume, it is necessary for the reciter to hear his own voice of recitation. Subhanallah. If the letters are pronounced correctly, but not loud enough. Not loud enough for the reciter to hear himself. And there is no obstruction, such as to noise or the problem of hard of hearing either. It is easier for him to hear. There is no problem with his ears. And no, there is any kind of ob obstruction. The Salah will not be valid in this case. So therefore, it is necessary for the reciter of Salah, of Qiraat in Salah, for him to read and recite the Quran in this manner, or loud enough that he himself should hear his recitation. Subhanallah. Although it is necessary for the reciter to listen to the voice of recitation himself, 
the sound should not reach others in Sirri Salah. What is Sirri Salah? Sirri Salah, the Salah in which recitation is done in low volume. That is called Sirri Salah. For example, Asr, Zuhur, and Asr is Sirri Salah. Qiraat is done in a low volume. When you are reading in those times, you should read so low in this tone, in this volume, that only you yourself should hear and do not read so loud that others must also hear. Similarly, listening to the voice of recitation while reciting tasbih is also necessary. For example, Subhana Rabbi al Azim, Subhana Rabbi al Azim, Subhana Rabbi al A'la, Subhana Rabbi al A'la. This should be read in a tone and in such a volume that one who is reciting this tasbih should hear it himself. Likewise, whatever is to be recited or said even other than salah, it must be recited or said in such a loud voice that the reciter or the speaker could hear himself. For example, how loud should the reciter say these words that he must hear it himself? Giving a divorce, freeing a slave, or mentioning the name of Allah Azza wa Jal when slaughtering an animal. In all these cases, the words must be said loud enough for the reciter to hear it himself. The same should be kept in mind when reading the Ruh Sharif and other awrab. Subhanallah. When you make tasbih, when you read any wadifa, don't only let the tasbih move. Don't only let the counter be counting what you're reciting. And it seems as if you are just mumbling something. Recite in this tone that at least you yourself should hear what you are reciting. Subhanallah. To recite at least one ayah in the first two rak'at of a fard salah, every rak'at of witr, sunan and nawafil salah is fard for the imam as well as the munfarid. However, dear views of Madani channel, a muqtadi is not allowed to do qiraat in salah, neither surah fatiha nor any other ayah, neither in a sirri salah nor in a jahri salah. The qiraat of the imam is sufficient for the muqtadi, subhanallah. So when a person is reading salah behind the imam, he should not recite anything behind the imam. Why? Because the scholars have mentioned in the fiqh books, in the Hanafi, according to the Hanafi madhab, especially that the qiraat is sufficient, the imam's qiraat is sufficient for the muqtadi. However, these are the madani pools regarding qiraat. We discussed the first one was takbir tahrima takbir tahrima to say Allahu Akbar. And then the second fard is to stand, which is called Qiyam. The third fard is Qiraat, which we have just discussed to recite the Holy Quran. Dear views of Madani channel, on the same token, let us ponder, as this is a very common problem in our society today, that we lack Ilmedin. We don't have any kind of jazbah. We don't have any love. Or we do have love, but we don't find the time to go and correct our recitation of the Holy Quran. Allahu Akbar. We recite the Quran, but in the manner of how our desires wish. In the manner of however we have learned 20, 30, 40 years ago. If it was wrong, it is wrong until today. Allahu Akbar. Most of the people are unable to distinguish between the sounds. Listen very attentively. Between the sounds of ta. Po, Seen, Swad, Tha, Hamza, Ain. Listen very carefully. Dal, Bod. How different they are. Allahu Akbar. Remember, if the meaning of a word becomes fasid, becomes wrong, as a result of changing the sound of the letter, Salah will not be valid. Bahari Shariat. Allahu Akbar. Agar in mid differences peda ho jata hai. 
where you cannot show the difference between ta and ta, seen and sword, ha and ha, the meaning of that word would change. Allahu Akbar. How? In which way, in which manner would we expect our salah to be accepted, dear views of Madani channel? For example, if somebody says, Azim instead of Azim, what did I say? If somebody says, Azim instead of Azim, while a za instead of a wa, in Subhana Rabbi Al Azim, he says, Subhana Rabbi Al Azim, with a za, instead of saying it, wa. His salah will become invalid. Allahu Akbar. His salah will become invalid. Therefore, if someone cannot utter awim properly, he should utter and he should say, Subhana Rabbi Al Kareem. Subhana Rabbi Al Kareem. Subhana Rabbi Al Kareem. Instead of Subhana Rabbi Al Azim. As he cannot say wa and he says za. Instead of saying that, he should utter Subhana Rabbi Al Kareem. Allahu Akbar. Just a little practice is not enough for the one unable to pronounce letters correctly, dear views of Madani channel. And one cannot perfect his recitation. He cannot correct his mistakes. He must practice hard day and night in order to rectify his mistakes. If such a person cannot offer salah led by the imam reciting correctly, it is fard for him to do so. Or he must recite only such ayat, such verses from the Holy Quran that he can recite correctly. Only those ayat that he can recite correctly, he should read them. And those that he cannot recite correctly, he should not read them. If both the aforementioned cases are impossible, his own salah will be valid during his learning period. Zamanai Koshish. If he tries hard to learn, day and night, he is making Koshish. He is trying very hard to learn the Holy Quran and then he makes mistakes. Perhaps his salah will be valid. His own salah will be valid. Regretfully, these days, a lot of people have this shortcoming. They do not know how to recite the Qur'an correctly and do not try to learn either. Remember, this ruins your salah. And this has been derived from Bahari Sharia, dear views of Madani channel. If someone could not correct his pronunciation in spite of making every possible effort day and night, as some people are unable to pronounce the letters properly, he or she must keep practicing day and night. In this case, he will be considered excused ma'zur during his learning period. His own salah will be valid, but he cannot lead the salah for those who can recite correctly. Those who can recite the Quran properly, he cannot be the imam for those people. However, during his learning period, he can lead the salah of those who cannot correctly pronounce such letters that he is also unable to pronounce correctly. But if he does not make any effort at all, he does not make any effort at all, so his own salah, even his own salah will not be valid. Then how can other salah be valid under his imamat? Allahu Akbar. This has been derived from Fatawa Radhiya Sharif. Dear views of Madani channel, you may have realized the importance of Qiraat, how important the recitation of Holy Quran is, how important it is to recite the Quran in the proper and the correct manner. Extremely unfortunate is the Muslim who does not learn correct recitation of the Holy Quran. Alhamdulillah Azza wa Jal, numerous madaris by the name of Madarasatul Madina have been established by Dawati Islami, the global, non-political, religious movement of the Quran and Sunnah. In these madaris, girls and boys are taught Hivz and Nazara, Quran free of cost. 
Subhanallah. Nadra is thought free of cost. Moreover, the correct pronunciation of letters as well as sunnas are thought. To the adults, usually after Salatul Isha in the Masajid. With that, everyone starts teaching and learning the Holy Quran in their homes. So, dear viewers of Madani Channel, let's build and inculcate this kind of jazba within us that I need to learn the Quran. I need to recite the Holy Quran in the proper manner. Why? Because I want my salah to be performed correctly. I want my supplication to be accepted. I want my dua to be accepted. And it can only be accepted. And your salah can only be valid if your qiraat is done correctly. If we start making koshish as from today. As from today. Let's start the views of Madani Channel. Subhanallah. Sallu ala al-Habib. Sallallahu ta'ala ala Muhammad. Sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam. Therefore, we have learned the third farb from amongst the seven faraid. takbir e tahrima was number one. takbir e tahrima Qiyam. Qiraat. Now the fourth is ruku. The fourth is ruku. Ruku is to make sure that the back, one's back is extremely straight, horizontally straight. The beloved Rasul sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam said, Allah Azza wa Jal does not see mercifully at such a salah of the person in which he does not straighten his back during ruku and sujood. How important this farz is. Have we learned about this? Have we known the importance of ruku? We have seen these days in masajid and in the homes of people that people make ruku shortcut. The back is not horizontally straight. However, it is bent to a certain degree where it is notified that the back is not straight. If there is no problem with one bending, then why do we rush in ruku? Why don't we do our ruku properly? So this is the fourth fard of salah. The fifth fard is sujood to make sajda. Listen very attentively, dear views of Madani channel. The beloved Rasul of Allah Azza wa Sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam said, I have been commanded to perform sajda on seven bones. I have been commanded to perform sajda on seven bones. Number one, the face, both the hands, both the knees, and finger set of both the feet. I have also been commanded not to fold my clothes and hair. Allahu Akbar. Two sujood are fard in each rakat. Two sujood are fard in each rakat. It is necessary that the forehead properly, properly rests on the ground. Resting of the forehead on the ground means hardness of the ground should be felt. The hardness of the ground should be felt while making sajda. Allahu Akbar. However, if someone performs sajda in such a way that his forehead did not properly rest on the ground, sajda will not be valid. Yes, sajda will not be valid. In case of performing sajda on something soft, for example, something which is soft, for example, such as grass, wool, or a carpet, if the forehead firmly rests onto it, it is pressed so hard that it cannot be pressed anymore. Sajda will be valid. Sajda will be valid. Subhanallah, subhanallah. Dear views of Madani channel, let's listen to a hadith of our beloved Nabi sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam. Hazrat Sayyiduna Wasila bin Asqa radiyallahu ta'ala anhu narrates that the Holy Prophet sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam said, none of you should remove his forehead, his forehead dust until he finishes his salah. Because the angels keep praying for his forgiveness for as long as the mark of sajda remains on his forehead. Subhanallah, subhanallah. What a beautiful hadith, dear viewers of Madani channel. It is not better to remove the dust from the forehead during salah. Allah Azza wa Jal forbid. Removing it out of arrogance is a sin. However, 
removing it out of arrogance, removing the dust out of the forehead, from the forehead is a sin. If someone suspects the fear of show off, he suspects the fear of show off, he should remove the dust from his forehead after the salah. Allahu Akbar. So dear views of Madani channel, the fifth condition from amongst the seven faraid of salah is sujood, is sajda. However, inshallah, we would like to invite you once again, please watch Madani channel and catch us on the next episode, inshallah, regarding the laws of salah. Do not forget our Madani mission and our Madani aim is that I must strive to rectify myself and the people of the entire world. Insha'Allah Azza wa Jal. Sallu ala al-Habib. Sallallahu ta'ala ala Muhammad. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Salatu wa salamun alayka ya Sayyidi ya Rasulullah. Wa sallam alayka ya Sayyidi ya Nabi Allah. Oh brothers, namaz will help you. Namaz will help you. To see Allah. Oh brothers, namaz will help you. Attention to attend.